morning. Uh, again, I'm joined by uh, Aaron Bailey, who's the Director of Homeland Security, Michael Harrison, Fire Chief Tim McConnell, Dr. Elvin, who runs Emergency Medical Services for our Central Grand Executive Director, Switch Water Board. We have representatives of Entergy with us, uh, and of course, other deputy mayors, um, and uh, folks that have been working very, very hard uh, with us. Uh, this morning, the National Weather Service has lifted uh, the tropical storm warning for New Orleans, but as you can see from watching TV and the weather forecast, we are not uh, in the clear yet. We are still under tornado watch until 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, unfortunately, we now know what that means potentially uh, for the city, so being on alert uh, is really important. Uh, we will still see heavy rain and localized flooding. There is still potential for heavy bands of rain to hit us tonight that would cause flooding. Uh, we expect an additional three to six inches of rain over the next 48 hours. And we have thunderstorms that are expected over the weekend. So again, um, we could stay on the fortunate side and that rain could come over a period of time, but if it all comes at one time, uh, we expect to have localized flooding throughout the city. So I wanna ask uh, the public and our citizens to stay alert uh, and to be prepared. Yesterday we experienced up to four inches of rain and we had some flooding. Uh, we saw a rise in tides which are impacting uh, Venetian Isles and Lake Catherine communities. Currently, Chief McConnell has the fire department positioned and ready uh, should there be further need in this area along with EMS and the police department. Uh, last night at peak there were 7,100 uh, homes that were out of power. Entergy informs me that all of those are back up and operating safe for 150, uh, and that, of course, is barring any other outages that may happen uh, today. But they will speak uh, more clearly to that, and those 150, I am told, will be back on uh, by 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, the following streets are closed, and we ask people not to try to access them. That would be Highway 11 between Chef Mentor and I-10, Chef Mentor between Highway 11 and Venetian Isles, and, of course, Lake Lakeshore Drive between uh, West End and Seabrook is closed because it's experiencing flooding right now, so we would ask people uh, to stay away from that area. Uh, this morning, Governor Edwards declared a state of emergency. Uh, the city of New Orleans is not under the state of emergency, uh, but our Homeland Security Emergency Center uh, is uh, activated and will remain open 24-7 uh, until uh, there is no further need. We're going to continue to monitor and provide updates when conditions change. It's critically important uh, that the public pay attention uh, to stay alert, you know, to, to get the alerts that they need, and to just be prepared. We have learned many lessons from many other storms and unfortunately have paid the ultimate price in some instances uh, for not um, staying vigilant. So we just need to, again, use common sense. Um, if you're in areas that, that all of a sudden have inundation and water, please don't try to drive through them. If there's an absolute necessity to do that and you know the water is low, please don't go fast because you will drive awake into somebody else's house or to somebody else's business. Uh, it's everyone's responsibility to be prepared and have a plan. Uh, we've been fortunate in the last couple of years, uh, but it's important not to become complacent. Again, uh, we hope this doesn't happen, but we are predicted to have a large number of storms. This is the third one uh, that you see has moved from not, not anything into a cyclone, into a tropical storm, and then back again. So the weather is very mercurial, uh, and we have to do everything that we can to make sure that we're prepared. Again, I want to ask everybody to report non-threatening issues, non-life-threatening issues to 311. Uh, that center is open and will continue to be so. I want to also encourage everybody, again, to go ready. You go to ready.nola.gov for any updates that they may need or directions about how to prepare. Uh, and I want to make sure that everybody just continues to stay in touch with their neighbors uh, in the event that there is an issue so we can help each other out. Uh, also, one of the things you can continually do is to clean your catch basins. Also, as I said before, this is really important. Don't drive through standing water. And then finally, follow us on social media uh, at NOLA Ready uh, for real-time updates. So I want to thank everybody for the cooperation. Uh, we've done really well as a community so far. We just want to stay vigilant, stay alert, uh, and make sure that we do everything necessary to protect uh, all of us by being good citizens, using common sense, being courteous, and working together. So I thank you uh, all for your time. And now I want to have Aaron Miller come up and give us some more specifics. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. The Emergency Operations Center remains fully staffed with federal, state, and local partners assisting in both monitoring the storm and responding to incidents within the city. Uh, we're prepared for additional rain and we will remain 
activating the emergency operations center until Tropical Storm Cindy makes landfall and is well inland. Uh, one of the things that I want to remind everyone is to visit ready.nola.gov for regular updates. Our folks in the Emergency Operations Center are taking that information that we receive from our residents via 311, from our public safety services, and from our state, federal, and local partners, posting that information online and providing regular updates through at NOLA Ready. Good morning. All of our pumping stations are fully staffed and operational. And, um, all of our sewer stations are operational. And all of our job sites have been secured so that they should um, all barricaded so that there's no work going on today in relation to sewer water drainage repairs. Our power plant is fully operational in both 25 and 60 cycle power. And as of now, we have no flooding reported at any of the 12 underpass stations and inside the flood protection. Stewart Entergy New Orleans. Thus far, Orleans Parish has fared very well. At the height of the storm last uh, night, we had about 7,100 customers out, and as of right now, only 150 customers out. As the mayor mentioned earlier, those customers will be back on by 2 p.m. today. We're continuing to monitor the weather, and we will respond as needed and as outages occur. We have over 1,200 restoration workers available across the state. Of that, 400 are currently working in the New Orleans metropolitan area. We also have additional crews available in Arkansas and in Mississippi that can respond as quickly as needed. Customers can get outage restoration information in a, in a couple of ways. We encourage you to download the Entergy app. You can sign up for text alerts, and you can also visit the EntergyStormCenter.com, not only for outage information, but also for safety information. And as always, safety is our number one priority. Please stay away from downed power lines. Call 1-800-9-OUTAGE if you do see a power line down. And remember to use any generators outdoors, not indoors. Thank you. All right. I'll we have a well-prepared team. Uh, we have a good marching orders. And if we follow those orders, I think we're going to be OK. Uh, it, a lot of rain fell last night and a lot of wind blew, but we're doing fine and I think we'll continue to do fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right, a couple of other fo following things. First of all, the uh, some of the wind uh, is fairly high and will remain that way. It could get upwards to 60 miles an hour. You can see from the cone uh, on TV that uh, our fellow Louisianians in southwest Louisiana are taking the brunt of it, especially with a lot of coastal flooding uh, around Cameron and Lake Charles. So our thoughts and our prayers out to them. The second thing to remember that we're learning again from this storm, which is new, is that just because we're not in the cone doesn't mean we're not getting the impact. We're used to seeing the cone for the hurricane and think that's the zone of impact. That's not true with this particular storm. And you can see that everything on the east side of it is going to get the wind, the rain, uh, and for us, the potential flooding in the event that the rain comes. So we're not out of it yet. We'll keep, um, you know, we'll be vigilant and we'll keep giving you updates. It's just Another thing, don't panic, just be prepared, be smart, use common sense, uh, and I think that we will be okay, God willing. All right, any questions? Back in, back in 2005, oh. the city was... Really, I know. You really want to go, you know, I know. You really want to go all the way back there. <laughs> there was Arlene Cindy Dennis before Katrina, and a lot of people were somewhat lulled into a, will we survive those storms, there are much ado about nothing. Do you have a concern that, given the fact this is going to be maybe a rain event for New Orleans, that if a future storm comes this way, people have this sense of, well, we went through Cindy, it was really much ado about nothing, we can stick well, around. Well, first of all, yes, I always worry about that. Most of the storms are much ado about nothing. We've had thousands of them since our 300th, you know, since we're talking about our 300th anniversary, we have them all the time. But I think we've learned that being complacent can get you in trouble. It's better to be prepared, it's better to lean forward, again, without panicking which is I'm hoping nobody's going to do that because we don't think that it rises to this level. But it is a good chance. This is a good opportunity for us to check your plan, to really think through whether you have what it is that you need in the event that it turns bad quickly, or if this doesn't, God forbid, that we have another one that does. So, again, that's why we're trying to be very measured here. Uh, I think we're in a good place in the city. I don't want people to let their guard down. Remember, it's loss of life that is the most important thing. And even in the most minimal storm that we've seen throughout our history, 
unfortunately, we, we, from time to time, lose somebody because they are trying to cut down a branch with a power line down that they're not paying attention to, or we'll drive into a space with more water because we're not paying attention. So, again, nobody needs to panic. We're all sophisticated players here. We all have a lot of common sense. We've been through this. Just stay awake, stay, you know, vigilant, and just look out for your neighbor, and everything ought to be okay. And then we'll get back into our regular rhythm of what we do here in the city. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, so with the rain yesterday, were, were there points where the pumping stations were not able to keep up, and what were they? No, we were all fine. It really is. This is a, this is really an engineering calculation. <laughs> if the rain falls so much in such a short period of time, the pumps won't be able to keep up. Unless it does, then it will, because the pumps really work. They're great at what they do, but not even the biggest pumps in the world can handle an inundation that's higher than a certain amount. So everything was fine yesterday. The pumping stations are working, they have full power, and, they went, and we have redundancy. So I feel very good about that system, unless we get overwhelmed, as Mother Nature tends to do from time to time. Yes? Is there a certain threshold, like in terms of inches per hour, where you really start noticing uh, the, the street flooding kind of on a more widespread level? Yes, yeah, Cedric, you want to run through those metrics? <laughs> Did you miss yesterday? <laughs> you not yeah. yesterday? No, I got that. Every edition. Yeah. 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 We say it every time. <laughs> The way the pumping system works is it will pump one inch of rain citywide the first hour and a half an inch of rain every hour after that. So to the mayor's point, if you get four inches of rain in a couple of hours, it's going to take a couple of hours to clean it out. But if it's an, as, as this, this rain has been coming about an inch an hour, we would pump. Which is a nice rain. I mean, but if you, if you get four inches of rain within two hours, you've got a couple of hours problem. You can almost, you can almost map it. Uh, and of course, everybody in the city knows exactly where that's going to be. So again, um, people just need to be very thoughtful because they know in their, in the, on their street and in their neighborhood how fast it's going to go up given, you know, how fast the rain falls. And, and Mr. Mayor, in yes. some parts of the city, like the east, we can store more rain in yeah. those places. You said that yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he was, so, so we, we can have got, more rain he, than most of the city can, actually. Inside the levee system. Inside the levee system. Right, yes. outside the levee system, which is right. also in the east. Venetian Isles and Lake Catherine actually have the exact opposite issue. Now, this is why, again, it requires individuals in the neighborhood to pay attention. You really know what happens in your neighborhood. There's nothing that we can do to change the science of what's going to happen if that rain comes down, which is why you have to think about it. So as the council member said in the east, if you're inside the levee system, you're in a much better space than you were a couple years ago. If you're outside the levee system, and the folks at Lake Catherine and Venetian Isles know what I'm talking about, you're more at risk. And a big storm right, can be easier on the folks inside the system than a small storm that goes slowly outside. So a couple of years ago, we had a storm that was moving at six miles an hour rather than the 12 or 13 that Katrina was, even though that was a bigger. And actually, Venetian Isles and Lake Catherine got hurt by the smaller storm that stayed for a long time than the biggest storm that moved quickly. So everybody just has to pay attention to where they are and what they have to do in their own particular areas. And if they need any help from us, we're going to be there, as I told you, especially for the folks out at Venetian Isles and Lake Catherine. I hope you're listening. The fire department is already staged out there in case anybody needs any help. So we're ready for where we think the problem areas will be. Thank all right, you all. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Don't feel bad. I have a hard time understanding that. Too. <laughs> Say it again.